Can I go? Yep. Okay, so most of us are going to go home tonight and sleep in our warm beds after a hot dinner, but there are some who won't have a bed or a hot meal tonight. 60% of African American teens live in low income families, 59% of Hispanics, 56% of American Indian, 32% Asian, and 27% of Caucasian. In 2014, 30% of children lived with parents who didn't have a steady full time job. Also in 2014, 21% of all children under 18 that had families um, that were at times unable to provide enough food. In 2017, the price of living is going up by 0.3%. Where is that going to leave our pro poverty rates? So, um, usually our home is our safe zone, you know, our bedroom is a place to be. Um, home is where you can relax, you're comfortable there, but a lot of times, there's teens who don't have that. They're stressed out, but they have nowhere to go because they don't have a home, you know. They have to go to shelters and stuff where they can't decompose their stress like we can. So it's a lot harder for them. Um, so this graph shows that 60% were middle to high income, 19% um, were below federal poverty, and 100 to 199% was F. See, but they didn't have an explanation for that, so I'm not sure. So at school in Baltimore, a group of teens were interviewed. The five st sources of stress most often experienced for them was schoolwork, parents, romantic relationships, friends, problems, like your friends' problems, not problems with your friends, and younger siblings. Um, in 2013, 40% of parents said that their teens are stressed out from high school. A survey conducted by American Psychological Association fund that 45% of teens said they were stressed by school pressures. So at a public school, we've got some of those, you know, not so good kids or whatever, not that they're bad, but they might not have the best intentions. So there's definitely a lot of peer pressure, and you might not see that in uh, private schools or church schools and stuff like that. Not saying that it's not there, it's just less common. Um, there's school pressure, you know, nowadays it's so hard to get into the colleges that you want. You have, you know, you have to have the money or the GPA, you have to put a lot of time in. That's a lot of stress. Um, having after school jobs or sports, um, trying to balance the both, plus making sure that your college resume is good, like, that's a lot of stress as well. So, I can't really read that, but it's teen peer pressure by the numbers and as you can see that as the older we get um, coming into high school there's more peer pressure going on. Oh, my bad, go back. 50% of teens feel pressured in regards to sexual relationships. Teens with friends who drink or do drugs are more likely to do the same. Easy access, easy to hide. So we all try to live the most balanced life we can. Um, we try to spend time with everyone and do stuff alone. Social media has changed everything. Some don't have a social life because they are too busy working or providing for their families. So um, some teenagers might have to provide uh, clothing for their younger siblings or rent money or food. Um, you know, or some people have the easy life where they get to spend all their money on whatever they want. Uh, but nonetheless, we're all busy, it's hectic, um, and it's stressful. So, social media. Almost all kids and teens have access to social media, so they should be more aware of privacy and security issues. But what if you're only allowed to go on uh, every once in a while because you don't have the money for the devices? Then these things to protect you are in the back of your mind. Young women show off their bodies on private accounts for money. 24% of teens, 13 to 17, go online pretty much constantly. 56% of teens go online several times a day. 71% use Facebook. 71% also uses more than one social media network. So, um, this is just numbers on, you know, what apps are used the most by teens.
Okay, so chronic stress can cause a sense of panic and paralysis. Stress can drain you physically, emotionally, and psychologically. Multi multiple factors can be a part of this. School, at home life, sexuality, relationships, friends, jobs, college, ETC. 31% of teens said that they were overwhelmed. 30% said that they were feeling sad and depressed. And 23% of teens said they had skipped a meal due to stress. Friends or family loss is another big stress factor, and most teens decide to self-medicate with drugs and alcohol. There are a few percentage of teens who actually do get help where um, they'll go and see a counselor or, or they'll be on some sort of medication, but it's so rare because so many kids um, don't have the access to the things they need. They don't have health care or health insurance um, because they're simply just too poor and they don't know how to reach out and get the things that we have to help them. Oh, yeah. So, family and relationship with parents, um, usually you can trust your family, they care about you, it's you know, a very loving atmosphere. In 2015, 66% of children slash teens lived with both their parents, which I found pretty shocking because the divorce rates are going up so fast and so high that I figured there would be a lot more, you know, or a lot less um, people living with both parents. And grandparents are becoming more and more responsible for their grandchildren by taking them in, raising them, or just financi financially, financially supporting them. 7% of children and teens live with their grandparents. 87% of parents say they feel they have a close relationship with their kids. Fathers are starting to step up by taking kids to and from activities, taking paternity time, and just being involved in the child's life. Seventy-two percent of all teams spend time with friends via social media. Friends can make things hard. Sometimes they can stress you out by always involving you in their problems, and they can pressure you into doing things. So you have like school friends where you only talk to them at school. You don't ever really do anything outside of school with them. You've got your real friends that you know you've been friends with since you were five, and you can go years without talking to them. But as soon as you meet up, it's like there was no time ever gone. And then you have your fake friends, the ones that are just there because they want to see you and not succeed. So body image. Body image is a huge factor um, in teen stress and everybody's stress. 69% um, of girls 5th to 12th grade said that magazines influenced their idea of a perfect body. After viewing images of female models, 7 out of 10 teens felt more depressed and angrier than prior to viewing the pictures. 90% of people with eating disorders are women between the ages of 12 and 25. Over half of teens and a third of teen boys, teen girls, and a third of teen boys use unhealthy weight control behaviors like smoking cigarettes, skipping meals, fasting, and taking laxatives. Approximately 91% of women and teens are unhappy with their bodies and resort to dieting. So most of the time they don't have good self-esteem. Eating disorders cause stuff like hair loss and um, your skin starts to go gray. Um, there's things like slut shaming, which we all know, and obviously media plays a huge role. And ethnicity, like, the new trend is um, people are saying, like, you're so pretty for being a dark skin girl. And, like, they're just pointing out the fact that they're dark skin, I don't know, and they're... You know, people, no matter what their skin color, are beautiful, so we shouldn't just be pointing them out because of their skin color.